Hello and welcome to another edition of Kraken Cryptic. Today I'm going to have a look at another variant Sudoku. Um, and this is meant to be kind of instructional in how to going about how to start going about a variant of Sudoku that you've never seen before. That was the case for me with this puzzle called Sudoku N in a recent um, Logic Masters India um, puzzle competition. They do some great competitions on this website, and this is a very interesting variant. So first thing is obviously to read the rules. Apply standard Sudoku rules, we know what those are. Then, two cells are separated by a black dot. If any mathematical operation, addition, multiplication, subtraction, or division performed between the two cells leads to a result of n. n is a number in the range 1 to 9 and is to be determined as part of solving all possible dots are marked. Well, the first thing to notice is there are no black dots, or nothing that I can identify as a black dot. So then you have to trip over into R. Ah, so the important rule is all possible dots are marked, and there are no dots. Therefore, for whatever the number n is, there are no two cells next to each other that allow one of these mathematical operations to give that number. And, okay, so how are we going to go about solving that? We don't know what n is, and we don't know how to find it in the first place. We don't have any two cells in the givens that are next to each other, so no clues there. So, as always, we now have to decide... Um, sorry. We now have to decide how to go about it, whether we use the standard Sudoku methods first or whether we try and use the, um, the, cons the extra constraint. Well, here I think it's very clear. We have to use the normal Sudoku rules to get going. So here's the beginning of the solve that I did. So up in this cell, you can see 5, 3, 4, 6, 2. Now, that 1 means there can't be a 1 in the middle row of that box. So the 1 has to be in one of those cells. The two 9s in these columns mean the same for the 9s. And in fact, the 9 here resolves that 1 and 9. 7 and 8 must go in the other cells. Now, after this, I do go off and have a quick look to see if I can... In fact, I've just overwritten the given there. I'll come back and correct that in a moment, I believe. Um, but I do have a look for any other numbers I can write in, like this 8 down here. And again, I'm still wondering what sort of progress I can make um, and using the notation methods that we've described before to eliminate within boxes down to a couple of cells when, when that helps. I think I've just noticed that I should have put 7s in these two cells here and um, I haven't. So correcting that back to the given 6 that we had. Sorry about that. Um, but in fact, the next thing to do here, I think, is to start... I've got a list of the numbers of 1 to 9, which could all be the value for n. And if you have a look in this box, you can really start ruling out the possible values of n. Um, these cells, 1 and 2 here, 2 minus 1 is 1, so n can't be 1. 2 times 1 is 2, so n can't be 2. 2 plus 1 is 3, so n can't be 3. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So all of those are gone. And you're down to now n is either 8 or 9. Well, there is probably a way that one could actually then go about this. Um, I'm going to try 8 as n. Um, and this is my approach to this, to solve it as quickly as I can. There might be some logical conclusion you can reach, and do feel free to write it in the comments if there is, because I'd be quite interested to know what the next most logical step at that point should be. But I've assumed that n is 8. And if n is 8, then neither of those two cells could be a 3, so that had to be there. That fixes the 1 and 9 here. In this box, 4 and 9 have to can't be in the middle row. And because 2 times 4 would be 8, that fixes the 9. In the centre cells, we have 1, 6, 8. 1 and 8 can't be next to each other, because 1 times 8 is 8. So 6 has to be in the middle. And 1 and 7 would make 8. So that fixes that box. So you can see that once you get a bit of a grip on one of the boxes here, 
this constraint is really quite powerful, especially if the number is 8, because you've not just got 7 plus 1, 2 plus 6, 5 plus 3. You've also got 8 times 1 and 9 minus 1 as well. So that's quite a lot of pairs that are constrained away. And as you can see, I'm kind of carrying on, just trying to fix a few possibles now. I've put back those sevens where they might have to, where they would have to be. Ones must be in one of those two cells in that box. Um, takes me a little while to um, get going up here. Eights have to be in the corners because there's an eight in this row and an eight in this column. Fours are in columns one and three, so the four in column two would have to be there. I think after a little bit more work in this top left box here, twos would have to be either here or here. And in fact, that seven is what decides the... Oh, no, it's not. That's, that's, that's for later in the book. Sorry. Um, can't remember what the next step is. Now, remember, we're trying to avoid any n equals eight possibilities. So we've got two, one, six, nine, eight, four... And I have fixed two there. I wonder how that was determined. It, it had to be in this row. Um, and I've decided that it couldn't be in this box here. And I think there was a good reason. I'm not quite sure what that was now. But the way that this works, that's then... Um, five and three can't be there. So one of them has to be in one of these three cells. And they can't, in fact, be together in those two cells. So one of them has to be in this cell. It can't be the three. It has to be the five. And now we're getting quite a lot of restrictions in this box here. Six is going to have to be in that top row now as well. Oh, picked off a three. And again, because one and seven can't appear together there, one of them must be in this cell. And it must be the seven. So these two must be five and one. Um, and again, we carry on making progress. I think I have to come back up to this top box to really get going again. Um, and here we go. Sixes have to be up there. And that is going to help in some way. One, that's fixed by the two ones that we've now got. And because that's a one there. We have seven one two five nine three. Um, that's determined these cells here. And then what that did, sorry, I'll just go back a step here. If I can. Oh. I don't know what's going on here, sorry, I'm struggling a bit. Right, there we go, we'll go back to here, play it from there, and pause it there. No, I've gone back a fraction too far, sorry. Right, so pause it there. And um, given this box up here is now 7462158839, this cell here is now impossible with our postulation of an 8 as in because we've got 7, 2, 8, 4, 6, 1, 5 in the column and 3, 9 in the row. So assuming all that logic held, we've proved it can't be n equals 8. And we might have guessed that because n equals 9 is slightly more, slightly less constrained because now you only have the four addition pairs, 2 plus 7, 1 plus 8, 3 plus 6, and 5 plus 4. They're not possible. And also, 9 next to 1, because either times or divide gives you 9. So now, it's a little harder to get the first step here, I think. Um, let's see where I go. Oh, terrible, I hit him my today. Sorry about that. Let's see where I go for that. Ah, oh, yes, there. 4 and 5 would add up to 9. So that fixes the 9 and 4 there. Again, 1 plus 8 in the middle would be 9, so 6 has to separate them. This time we can't determine which way around they go at this point. Um, then we have to look around for something else to do. Now, 1 must be somewhere up at the top, and because there's a 1 in columns um, 4 and 6, both in the, both those boxes, the 1 down here 
has to be either here or here. It can't be here because of those ones. So that fixes the one. Now, um, the other numbers missing in this column are 7, 5, and 3. We can't deduce anything from that. But we can tell that 2 has to be in this column here. It's been ruled out of those cells by that 2 and the middle cell by that one. Um, sevens can't be in those cells because of that seven or that one because of that one. And they can't be here because they'd be next to the twos. Um, so now what I've worked out, the twos have to be R, the F. This is a useful point here. Twos, there we go. Twos have to be in those twos, in one of those two cells because of that two and that two. And it can't be this cell because of that 7-2 possibility, which would add up to 9. So that fixes that 2 and allows us to make a bit more progress. 2 goes in here. Now we know that one of these is now a 2. And the other one can't then be a 7, because that would be a 2 and a 7 next to each other. So 7 has to be in one of these two cells. can't be in this column, so it must be in this cell here. Ah, oh, I've actually gone and fixed the 5 up here, which I think was given once we'd got that 2. That fixed the 4. Then, I'm just going to pause again. Cells we had empty in this top left box were 6, 3, and 8. 6, 3 couldn't be together, because that would make 9. So one of them had to be in this cell, and that couldn't be the 3, so it had to be the 6. So that's how we got that box finished, effectively. Um, and then we've got 1 and 8 must be up here together. Um, and we've got 1 and 8 there as well, which is an interesting double pairing. Now, in a normal Sudoku, that pairing would all make it impossible because you could never resolve them. But this has the extra constraint, so that's not quite such a panicking issue for once. Now, in this row, we've got 3, 1, 2, 7, 8, 4. This cell is going to have to be the 5. I obviously haven't spotted that yet on the run through. Ah, what I have worked out is that these three are 3, 4, and 7 in some order. And if those three are 3, 4, and 7, then again, that's just another way of working out that this one can't be any of 3 or 7, so it must be the 5. Um, is that helping? Yeah, it should help. I could fix the 5 down here if I'd seen that as well because we've got 5 in that column and a 5 in that column, 5 in that row, and the 5 can't be here because 4 and 5 would make 9. So that's something I could have spotted at this point. I don't think I did. Um, let's see where I did go next. It, it is a little difficult. You do like, with this constraint, it seems to be that it really helps to work on, to get a whole box going, and then it can fall quite quickly. Um, just working out how 1, 3, and 9 are disposed here, and I don't, there, there are two possibilities effectively, so I haven't figured that one out yet. Um, yeah, I'm clearly still looking for something to give me a bit of traction. I'm not finding it just at the moment. That 5 would have helped. I wish I'd spotted that at this point. Um, let's see where I go next. Bit of a pause here. I mean, you can see I'm not finding this easy. I have even solved this puzzle a month ago when the test came out, so I shouldn't really be struggling this much, but it is quite an unusual constraint and quite necessary to solving the puzzle. Um, I think I finally decide to put in these two ones here, which must be, the, the one must be in one of those two cells in this box. Ah, oh, and I've determined it's not there because of the 9 beneath it, 9 times 1, or 9 divided by 1. So that's actually a little helpful. Um, that helps fix this 4 here. Those two can't be 6, 3, because that would be 9. So one of them must be 8, has to be that one. Um, and now these two can't be 6, 8, 4, 7. Um, that can't be a 1. I don't remember quite how that got fixed, but it did. So, and, and now we're kind of on mostly the homeward trail at this point. Um, 
And, you know, it's a very interesting concept. These two, again, can't be two, seven. It's this same sort of logic that we have to use all the time. So one of them must be three, and that fixes this cell. Um, we can finish off this box now. We've got the whole left third done, and we can start working on this. That's going to put a six down here, if I notice that. I'm um, just finishing off that row. This couldn't be six, three, so that fixed the three and the two. Um, and now we've got quite a lot everywhere. Seven, I think, I know five couldn't be, oh no, this cell, nine, four, one, six, two, three, couldn't be seven because of the two above it, so it had to be the five, and that gets us going down here. Now, what this leaves us with in the end is a few like conflicting pairs, and I know that they're gonna have to be resolved. I've got seven, eight up here, and clearly seven, eight in these two as well. Um, and that's quite irritating because I don't quite know how they're going to fall out. Um, and I know, but I do know that I will be able to work it out in some way. In fact, what's going on up here is I could have done this from almost as soon as I'd established that n was 9. 2 and 7 was impossible in those two cells. It takes me an awful long time to spot that. Well done if you've been screaming that at the screen for a long time. It's quite important and it took me a long time to notice it. I don't think, I think it takes several seconds even now. Now, over here, again, this 1 and 8 pair is quite difficult to finish off. But it all hinges on the fact I haven't noticed I could finish off this 6 9 pair up here because I've got 6 and 9 done in this bottom box now. So, um, First of all, I think I finally spot this two. Yeah, there we go. Eight, seven, eight, and seven. And then finally, I can now notice that the six, nine is resolved already. It should have done that a while ago. And once you've done the nine, six here, the cell next to the nine cannot be a one because that would give you the nine times one that isn't possible. So that one has to be the eight. And there we go, we actually get to a finish finally that way. And that is how you go, in my opinion, about tackling that, tackling that variant. As I say, I'd be very interested to see any more logical path to determine the point at which you knew n was eight or nine. Um, hope you've enjoyed that, hope it's been of some interest and uh, makes you feel a bit more able to tackle a variant that you haven't seen before. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Do please subscribe if you're enjoying these videos and I uh, hope to see you again on Crack the Cryptic. Bye for now.